This is a story about Rumi and Shams e Tabriz. Rumi, of course, is the most widely read poet in the West, 13th century. He never wrote, he just uttered. He would go into trance and he would receive those messages, those exquisite words from those invisible realms, and he would simply articulate them. And his scribes would write them down. Who was Shams e Tabriz? He was an older uh, person. Uh, you might call him a, a hippie Darvish. Darvish is one who stands on the threshold of both worlds. So Shams e Tabriz was a holy human being, rebellious in his nature, who, had, who was in possession of what is called divine secrets. It is said that if you happen to be in possession of divine secrets, very rare, you really want to share that with someone because it's like hot coals on your hand. And Shams e Tabriz always prayed to God, who is it I can share these divine secrets with? No answer. He was getting very frustrated. But one day, a voice from the mystery said, yes, there is one. His name is Jalaluddin Rumi. Go in this direction, towards Konya. Shams Tabriz did go that, in that direction. And where was Rumi? Of course, he was very young at this time. In his 20s, he had become a very famous professor of Islamic jurisprudence, law, sciences. Very much into his head. And Rumi was in the courtyard, in the gardens, with his adoring teachers, uh, I mean students, uh, who were learning from him, and he was going over these valuable manuscripts. And now Shams e Tabriz, this wild, long-haired holy man, he scales the wall, he bursts into the presence of Rumi, and says, what is all this reading, reading, reading? Meaning, why don't you live it, experience it? And everybody's shocked the way this person is addressing this famous teacher, Rumi. And Rumi looks at him sarcastically and says, you won't understand. What does Shandar Tabriz do? He grabs those manuscripts, he goes to the water fountain and just dumps them in the water. These are valuable manuscripts. Everybody's aghast. Uh, Rumi rushes there and Shandar Tabriz says, stop. And he begins to take out page by page each of those manuscript pages, and as he takes them out of the water, they become bone dry. Rumi says, what is this? And Samstabri says, you won't understand. And from that time on starts this beautiful relationship between Rumi, the intellectual, he had some spiritual wonderful gifts also through his training, but mostly in his head and in his conversations and the spiritual practices that Shams Tabriz taught him, Rumi says his heart opened up. That's one description of a meeting between Rumi and Shams Tabriz. The other one they say is that actually it happened this way. Rumi was on his donkey and his adoring students were behind him. And again, Shams Tabriz bursts in front of him and says, uh, he stops Rumi and says, Rumi, tell me, who was greater? Muhammad, who said, Oh God, we have not known you as we should have. Or that ninth century great Islamic Sufi saint or sage who said, Glory be to me, how great is my majesty. And Rumi gave a good answer. He said, Well, Bistami, he had one gulp of the divine and he was overwhelmed. Whereas Muhammad, peace be upon him, he had one gulp of the divine, but he wanted more and more and more. But the depth from which this question arose, when Shams Tabriz asked him this question, something about that question, the profoundness of that question, the depth from which it arose, that impacted Rumi and he fainted. So this, people say, is a second account, or an alternative account, they say, of the meeting between Rumi and Shams e Tabriz. But a question to ask oneself is, 
in my life, in your life, did you have an extraordinary meeting with someone who changed your life? Or did you receive a question from outside or within you which was so profound that also created a shift within you?